Converting an air heater into a pool heater plus building an extra pool heater. I built the original air heater, see the video. It worked well but was necessarily bulky and was not strictly required for subtropical areas. Here there were only two cool months and setting it up for that short period of time was not really worth the effort. There was a desire to reuse this equipment and the most logical use was pool heating. The most attractive solution would be to mount the heater out of the way somewhere in a location that gets sun all day. For test purposes the pool heater will be mounted at the pool side. This is very convenient and efficient but not really very pretty. I can live with that during testing. Mounting the heater remotely would require more pumping power, longer feed and return lines and depending on the length of the return lines might even require external insulation. The unit would require modifications for the purpose change. After removing the trim and heater plastic screen, the removal of the fans and discharge duct was the first step. After that the discharge hole was replaced with steel matching the original profile. The new steel and heater was sealed and painted matte black to match the original finish. Insulation was fitted behind the new steel. To catch the spring summer sun instead of the winter sun would require a different angle. This was quite easily done. I just made the top the bottom. The original inlet holes were covered with plywood and through them holes were drilled for the new uh, plastic pipe. The original air heated had aluminium box sections and other rods and ends attached. These pieces were reused to provide mounting points for the heater polypipe. The polypipe I used was 13mm ID, 50mm OD. This seemed ideal as it was black, lightweight, cheap and locally available. Also it was easy to use, flexible, had a reasonable bending region and the water inside could be easily heated with its large surface area for capacity. Fittings were cheap and also readily available. I started with a 50 meter 164 feet roll of the pipe and wanted to make two adjacent pipe runs for cross heating. It was a bit tricky doing this with this long roll. Two 25 meter rolls would have been easier. I attached the poly pipe to the aluminium box sections using a generous number of cable ties. I took care that the pipe was fully supported and closely positioned. I left a suitable length outside the heater for pump connection. The pipe run started at the heater outside and worked inwards because the central area of the heater should be warmer than the perimeter. The holes exited the heater box at the opposite end to the entry, again leaving enough length to bring the discharge pipes part way into the pool. After the installation of the first 50 meters, there seemed to be space within the pipe loops uh, for more runs, so I bought another 50 meter roll and commenced to attach that. After a number of loops I noticed that the pipe was starting to kink. 
I wasted time, time trying to stop this, but didn't achieve anything. A clear indication that the bending radius had been exceeded. I used about 25 meters from the second roll. The total pipe used about 75 meters. I bought a $50 submersible pump from eBay, getting the smallest one readily available. 400 watts, 8,000 litres an hour, uh, 3 metres head. This is ideal as the head requirements are perfect. The flows are suitable for heat extraction at 2 litres a second and the power usage is minimal. If necessary to fabricate a transmission piece between the pump discharge and the poly pipes, the pump was fitted with a support rope which I attached to the heater frame. The power circuit must be fit, fitted with an earth leakage breaker. I refitted the original fan controller and connected its sensor to the underside of one of the heater pipes near the center of the pipe array. I also fitted temperature indicators on the pull surface layer, pull bottom and heater body. I had a properly uh, earthed power socket uh, connected to the controller output. I refitted the heater cover and trim and positioned it by the pool uh, and connected the suction pipes to the submersible pump. For an, an initial value, I set the temperature control as starting the pump at 40 C and stopping it at 35 C. These values should ensure that it only pumps when worthwhile. After pumping the hot water, some cool will be pumped as the heater pipe is quickly cooled by the pool, uh, pool bottom water. But it takes a few seconds for the temperature drop to reach the controller sensor. The pump will typically run for a number of seconds followed by a period of minutes while the pipes reheat to the pumping temperature. On initial tests uh, in spring, the pump uh, ran for approximately 40 seconds, time between pumps approximately 16 minutes. The heater's internal size was 790mm by 1850mm, uh, giving 1.46m squared or 15.7 square feet. Heating a 50,000 litre pool is a big ask for a smallish DIY solar heater. I had a spare sheet of plastic so I decided to use it as the basis of a second heater. The second heater would be a simpler design using lessons uh, learned from the first heater. I made up a rectangle of 90 by 35 timber sized to match the plastic sheet. Its dimensions were 1620 by 1150, giving an internal size of 1540 by 1090, equals uh, 1.68 uh, square meters or 18.06 square feet. To the rear of the rectangle, I fitted some 3 millimeter plywood I had from a previous project. I purchased a sheet of 25mm expanded polystyrene to fill the space above the plywood and provide heat insulation. Above the polystyrene foam, I placed a sheet of thin steel less than 1mm again from a previous project. 
I positioned the steel in place with a large number of small anchor brackets and painted the whole thing dark green with metal paint, the colour to make it heat absorbing. The new heater would require a support frame for the poly tubes. I wanted to keep this as light and low cost as possible, so I made up 2.5mm 1 inch straps and attached them uh, to the other uh, small angle buckets to the timber frame approximately 2.5cm uh, above the steel backing sheet. They were made up just a bit short end to end so they could be pulled tight. Two straps were fitted end to end, eight straps were fitted side to side and a central block uh, to support the centre. The second heater would be mounted side on to the pool to take up less uh, area space. Holes were drilled through the frame at either end for the poly pipe to enter and exit. Poly pipe was installed as before, avoiding any kinks. Total pipe used 100 metres. After the pipe installation, the space was left in the heater's centre. This was a good thing as it allows the backing sheet to capture heat which passes through the steel and air to heat the rear of the poly tubes. After establishing that this system works, it was time to come up with something more acceptable, long term and easier to live with. One of the first changes was the removal of the submersible pump and its replacement with a pump mounted on the pool side. In the new location, the heaters get the sun for most of the day. The pump for both heaters is controlled from the idle of the heater's temperature control. One controller is set to start at 42 and the other at 38, as it's consistently cool. However, each of them turn off at 0.1C lower than the start temperature, as indicates we slow to drop. Uh, at my install, the pool heaters and pump have negative running costs as the pump will only run when the panels are hot and when the sun is shining creating uh, free power from my solar PV panels. On sunny days, if for some reason the pump is out of service for a lengthy period, the heater should be fitted with sun reflected covers to stop the pipes overheating. The maximum temperature poly pipe should be subjected to is 82 degrees Celsius uh, when heating. This video was produced with a possible assistance for someone who may be considering a DIY solar pool heater. It may help you some 
avoid some of the problems I encountered. It is a low cost rather than a Rolls Royce solution. I know it could be done better, i.e. perhaps matte black instead of dark green I already had. Uh, if you're interested in making an air heater similar to the original one uh, we used here, there is a separate video for that. Forgive me for any typos, I'm a retired engineer, not a secretary. Electrical work should be done by a suitably qualified tradesman. If you like D DIY and international travel videos, please like and subscribe. This is just my hobby, so there are no adverts or requests for funding.